Welcome to Targets in Focus on the first day of this trading week. I'm joined on the line with Malik Narain from UBS in London to have a look at the ruble, rupee and South African rand. So Malik, how big of a depreciation do you think the ruble will have this year? Um, we are looking at uh, further depreciation for the ruble against the dollar. We currently have a, uh, a three-month forecast of uh, 34 uh, against the dollar and a six-month forecast of uh, 34 and a half. Uh, currently, our 12-month forecast is for a bit of stabilization after that to about three, uh, 33.5 against the dollar. Um, in the near term, the, the main issues for the ruble are uh, ongoing deterioration uh, in, in the current account. Russia's current account uh, has been deteriorating very, very sharply in the, in the last few years. Uh, it's currently running at about 1.5% of GDP, uh, which is the lowest it has been since 1999. Um, and the, the concern that, that we have is that we are likely to see further deterioration. Um, this is uh, obviously happening despite relatively stable oil prices and, and also rather weak growth within Russia, um, which warns that it is uh, on the back of uh, structural factors that might be quite difficult for the authorities to arrest. Uh, for example, what we're seeing is that the services account, so Russian spending um, on, on foreign tourism, for example, has significantly ratcheted higher, uh, and, and that is likely to persist on the back of um, the currency's um, overvaluation um, in, in, in real terms and on the back of uh, fairly strong wage growth. Uh, you're also seeing that uh, on the other side of the current account uh, deter uh, deterioration, you also have a deterioration in capital outflows. Uh, Russian companies still uh, continue to uh, invest large amounts of capital overseas. So this is all mitigating the, the upside uh, pressure on the ruble, and in fact, it's, uh, it's, it's creating a, a concern in, in the FX market. We've been seeing foreign positioning in the Russian debt market. The OFZ market has increased massively over the past few years, and what we're worried about is that ongoing ruble weakness can start to trigger some outflows from that asset class, uh, which can create a bit of a vicious circle between, between debt and FX in Russia. And the Indian rupee climbed to a one-month high. What were the main driving factors that drove this currency upwards? Yeah, the rupee has benefited a lot from uh, optimism that uh, we will see a change of government um, in uh, this April's elections. Uh, the state elections uh, in about five Indian states um, has, uh, has supported that enthusiasm since, since December. Um, I think, however, there is uh, some some over optimism now seeping into the FX market. There, uh, there seems to be a, a sense that um, Narendra Modi, who is uh, seen as the most likely candidate to to replace um, uh, Manmohan Singh, there's a lot of um, optimism that he may may be able to turn the economic tide. Um, however, I think you know the the challenges that India faces are, are huge. You've got um, reforms that are needed in the labor law, um, in, in the labor laws to, to make um, the country more competitive. And there is currently no discussion on that taking place within India. Reforms are still focused in sectors that only make a tangential difference, like uh, liberalizing FDI in retail and liberalizing f uh, fuel prices and so on. These things are, are not going far enough to meet the, the challenges of the Indian economy. You've also... Um, uh, got uh, uh, a significant uh, deterioration in, in, in the fiscal um, position of India, which, again, is, is reflecting some of the, the social challenges that India faces and which can only really be addressed in an environment of, of strong economic growth. And, and that is going to be difficult for, for just one man to, to uh, achieve, especially if, as the polls indicate, we get uh, something bordering a hung parliament, which is going to compromise his ability to implement broad-based reforms. So we are, um, at these levels, starting to, to look at um, opportunities to, to buy the dollar against rupee. Uh, our current forecasts are in three months, uh, dollar rupee at 63 in six months at 63.50, uh, and in 12 months, uh, our current forecast uh, is 65 against the dollar. South Africa's RAND weakens the most among emerging market currencies before the release of mining production data. Now, are you expecting positive or negative data, and how do you see the RAND performing paired with its US rival? 
We are projecting that mining production in South Africa um, is going to continue stabilizing in the next few months. Uh, that's because um, a lot of the unrest um, in the mining sector, especially outside of platinum, is is, is normalizing. So we, we should see uh, a bit of an increase in, in mining production and, and possibly export volumes as well from South Africa in the in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, despite that, we are very, very cautious on the RAND. Um, our current forecasts are for dollar RAND uh, in three months at 1110, uh, in six months, uh, 1120. Uh, and in 12 months, we have a, a bit of a stabilization back below 11. Our concerns um, in South Africa are, are effectively the following. Uh, first, most of the impact of RAND weakness um, in terms of restoring South Africa's competitiveness is being blunted by increasing unit labor costs. Um, and, uh, and and ongoing growth in civil sector wages, which mean that the country isn't necessarily becoming a lot more competitive, even as uh, as the rand is weakened. Also, one factor that South Africa will have to contend with going forward is that um, a slowdown in China, particularly a slowdown in fixed asset investment growth in China, um, is going to um, uh, is extending and is going to also mean that China's demand for, for South African imports um, is likely to grow at a, at a slower pace. Even though the Europe, uh, the European Union and um, the U.S. are recovering, the, there are signs that the U.S. recovery is, is not making huge demands on, on South African platinum. Uh, in fact, South African exports to the U.S. have been down about 30% in the last few months, year on year. While Europe's uh, auto industry, which is the most relevant sector for South Africa, is not recovering at a, at, at a very impressive pace at all. So, we, uh, in short, we basically think South Africa will still face something of an exports crisis in the next few months, uh, which is going to put the rand on the back foot. Uh, against that, the debt market, which is where the bulk of uh, flows have um, uh, into South Africa have um, have come in in the last few years and supported the current account deficit financing. Uh, we don't think that South African bonds offer significant value at, at these levels. Spreads to U.S. Treasuries um, have have not really widened out much through through this sell-off in emerging markets over the past six months, and uh, positioning is adjusted even less. So we basically don't see much reason for, for, for the RAND to rally. And, and by contrast, if we are right to be skeptical about an export rebound, uh, then we may see the, the current account continuing to surprise markets on the downside. So, so we, are, we are still negative on this currency. Monica, thank you very much. As always, a real pleasure. Well, that is it for now, but Monica Gibson will be back with Targets and Focus on Wednesday for a look at European emerging market currencies. Goodbye.